You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. So there's only certain times ever in movie cinema where the right actor comes along and gives you something that you're just like, oh my God, yes, this makes total sense. I'm talking about Tom Hanks as Geppetto. We're talking about Pinocchio. Yes, we are talking about Pinocchio. Eric, how the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm... I was not happy to, to to do this movie. There is a lot of really bad press going on with Disney right now, right? Because they are running out of stuff. They are remaking everything. Right. Every cartoon that they had that they took or, or had um, made them famous, they are just redoing into a live action. And you know, more, obviously, the more recent controversy of uh, the Little Mermaid trailer that's going around, but. Um, boy, I bet you Pinocchio's glad that that trailer came out when it did because it's going to get rid of any bad press that it probably would have uh, headlining into into that. Um, that being said, reluctantly turning this on, what what did you think kind of going into this? Uh, I was I was kind of stoked just because I heard, you know, Tom Hanks was in it. I saw the trailer, so I was like, Tom Hanks has your pedal. Like, that's something that's been floating around the internet for a long time, you know? Yeah. Um. Just kind of go back on it. There was another actor that people were like, "Oh, that should play that character." Uh, the old man in uh, Pet Cemetery. People were saying that should be Mel Gibson. Oh, okay. You know, excuse me, I had a cough. But no, I mean, I was I was interested in that. Um, I was expecting a different looking Pinocchio, but I got literally the cartoon <laughs> the exact into this same Pinocchio, the same exact thing. Um, I was saying for, you know, Joseph Gorham, love it. Okay, it's Germany Cricket. Let's see what's going on. And, you know, Robert Zumeckis, you know, he's kind of like Spielberg, right? I mean, like, he he was known as this great, awesome director in the 80s and then floundered, right? I mean, do we talk about Back to the Future, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump? I was just, woof, would his you, career. Would you use the word floundered or just maybe um, the iron got cold? I don't know because I really did like his – Welcome to Marwin Call or whatever. Marwin. I yeah, really yeah, enjoyed that film. Definitely have a, a call back to that a few different times. Um, yeah. He seems to be, um, like many directors, excuse me, going into more of the studio producer role rather than it being um, in front of the camera. Uh, but it looks like he's got a few more projects coming up. So it's not like he's uh, short for work. We did review The Witches, which is another th- movie that he did recently, right? Right, with, um, he's one step away from golden headphones. <laughs> yeah, he's one <laughs> step away. Uh, yeah, so it's it's quite an interesting work or body of work that he has. Uh, not the first time he's worked with Tom Hanks in uh, well, if we're counting the Polar Express, Forrest yeah, Gump, Castaway. Yeah, so uh, obviously these two um, know each other and <laughs> they know what they need to do to bring out the better parts of them. I enjoyed Tom Hanks in this movie. <laughs> yeah, Tom Hanks was absolutely fun. Um, I'm surprised that this did not come out Disney premiere and they need to pay us 30 bucks. They did that with Mulan. We were supposed to remember that like a year or two ago. We were supposed to review Mulan, but then like months later it was free. Did they stop doing that? Did they realize that was stupid? I, I think they, they're still in the experiment phase. Okay, didn't cause... they do it with also with what like Lion King or uh, some other other live action ones? I think they're picking and choosing because they know like what's going to be buzzworthy enough to get more money. Right. Rather, you know, like it, this is really milking a dead yeah. cow here, isn't it? Like they're really just instead of going for the you know the big cash in, they're just going for like those little pocket ones that are. It, it's a weird. It's a weird time. <laughs> it is. It's definitely weird. Uh. Also, because I kind of wanted to ask you, you seem to be more about the buzz of the internet. I'm more of the what's going on in the industry, movie industry kind of guy. You're more of the buzz of the internet kind of guy. Mm-hmm. So before Pinocchio, I saw the teaser for Little Mermaid. What's 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 the bull? Well, BS. I mean, like, what what's everybody all upset about? Oh, it's a race issue. They're so used to um, their Ariel being a, uh, a pale white ginger, and uh, they're upset that you're joking. I, I, I wish I was. Is that literally that's what this is? Well, I Seriously? wish it was more in-depth than, than that. But whatever, people are just going to be, um, I, I think it's a 
if your issue, main issue in life is, is that, then you must have a pretty comfortable life, buddy. Just not having to worry about anything else but this movie. But I, I would be more concerned, and this is what bothers me, is because continue, uh, Disney, Disney excuse me, is continuing to do this live action stuff, right. and it, it's clearly working. This negative response, because the trailer got like a, over a million dislikes or something like that, versus the... It, it doesn't matter, because people still went there to view it. So it, it's... Um, like Elvis, how uh, we saw yeah. in Tom Hanks and Elvis, uh, yeah. would sell the I hate Elvis pins. Yeah. He's like, well, geez, these people are, are going to pay money to, to hate on it, so why not? So if these people are going to watch a video, give them a, a, a hit just to dislike it, all welcome. You know, that money uh, is the same color. It doesn't, you know, doesn't burn any uh, a different way, so... So that's it. I mean, like, I, I don't want to move on, but but that's it, though, right? That's the that's typically majority. What is the issue? Is that the Little Mermaid is not white? Yeah, for now, and I'm sure it's going to be a you know a, a different reason for another movie somewhere down the line, right? It's she probably was a great actress for the role, isn't her name Halle Berry? That's because because I thought that's <laughs> what people was upset about was that her name was. We're Halle we're digressing, Berry. but yeah, she's a singer from a uh, from a her and her sister. Uh, we're digressing. Let's okay. go back to, to Pinocchio here because we're gonna we're curious. obviously gonna be watching that one later. And in... yeah, yeah, we're gonna be watching. No, I was excited about this, and then just for the record, everybody who was listening, the reason why we're doing Pinocchio is I'm in small town Ohio. Clerks Three is not in my area. Sure. So, Clerks 3 review will come out eventually, everybody. It's just, you know, just the way it is. Uh, no, I was excited. So, I'm going to tell you this. For anybody who was listening, Eric, I know you don't have this luxury yet. Uh, but for anybody who's listening that has children, last night, pre this recording, I say to my daughter, Hey, uh, tomorrow, since you have a teacher work day, no students, uh, we're going we're gonna to watch Pinocchio. i got to review it. Daddy, what's Pinocchio? Well, it's blah, 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 blah. And she went, oh, okay. Mommy leaves to go to work at 7.30 in the morning. At 7.40, I get a six-year-old girl in her nightgown jumping on the bed, missing the bed, jumping on my back and butt area, screaming, Pinocchio, Pinocchio, Pinocchio. Pinocchio. So I've been working on that, like, ugh. I stayed around the house. So 7.50. This morning of this recording, I watched Pinocchio with my daughter. Um, and then the last little bit of thing about my daughter that was fun to begin to the movie is that she had no idea really what it was about. And then she goes, Daddy, if I'm bad, do I turn to a donkey? And I saw this opportunity, so I said, yes. Oh, yes, yes, you would. Yes, you do. Yes. She goes, but you're bad all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Gotcha. So I was like, I'm not a kid. Uh, yeah, so I was, I was, I was kind of to see, I was, so going off a of daughter into movie guys world, Eric. Yeah. I mean, the people were attached, right? Robert Zemeckis, Tom Hanks as Geppetto, uh, Joseph go love it as, uh, Jiminy, Jiminy Cricket. Cricket. Let's, let's see what this is all about. Um, some things that are different, right? Right off the bat, I actually kind of dig this. So I was telling my wife about how the movie was different from the cartoon in the 1940s. Uh, it's heavily implied that, that Geppetto's wife and son die. Yeah, I was... It's right there in the face. Yeah, it was It was a good... Um, noticing, like, a little... Those little fixes that they did throughout the movie, I think, um, were more enjoyable than a lot of the movie, but... Yeah. You know, it's it's lighthearted enough to where you know the story, and so those little things that are different really yeah. stand out. Yeah, I, I actually thought it was better. Um, than the 1940s in this part where like he has the picture of his son who looks like the get up with the uh, Pinocchio get up. We didn't see anything of the wife. All he said was the wife loved the cuckoo clocks. Yeah, and uh, I thought it was a that was nice touch there because it kind of signifies why he has them, why he makes them, and the silliness of this shop owner not selling any of his clocks, right? Right. That so maybe he thing. once was successful at and making all these oddities, and then, so maybe we can uh, suggest that maybe his wife had died recently. That that she was not, um, you know, a, a young person either, but the son was. That you know, and it right. tormented them both. And maybe it, I'm adding well, a lot of more story to it, but you know, when they did the remake of uh, 
uh, Beauty and the Beast, they had that added scene where it was um, Beauty's something about Beauty's family died of the Black Plague. Right. It. Yeah. Yeah. It is is do we because we know this is Italy? Do we know the time period? I mean, could there be the Black? No, there's no Black Plague in this, right? Uh, 1883 would be what the the book Avengers of Pinocchio came out. So we can assume then. We so can no, probably black guess plague. around there, right? Okay, so probably they had cholera. Uh, that's that's a safe bet, Jordan, actually. Right, that's probably a safe bet. Uh, but we get uh, Jiminy Cricket, you know, stumbling in. Now, I've not seen the original movie in years, so I don't know if your memory is better than mine. I don't remember the opening. All I knew is that in the beginning of the original uh, 1940 cartoon, there was no hint of wife and child dead. Uh, <laughs> so that's new, I'm assuming. Right. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, thankfully, uh, you know, it, Sarah got to rewatch it, and I was able to background and watch it. And I, I do remember this movie a lot. Like I remember watching it. It was one of the movies on repeat, if not for me, then one of my sisters, where, you know, every the every one part, like you don't think you remember, but then it gets going, and you're just like, oh, this part, oh, this part, and uh, yeah. So that's really what it was as an experience for me watching this. Um, I don't quite remember that opening part. I remember this, the original being a lot scarier, and I remember, remember the biggest part, and I'm, like, uh, I'm glad that you were pointing this out, is because um, those little things about like Geppetto wishes from the depths of his heart for this, for this right. boy, and the first thing he does, not even in a night, it's just like, all right, get, you, get your ass to school, little kid. Uh, I'm glad you're here, but you got to go to school. And it's like, well, that's kind of a weird... Also, I asked... Uh, Sarah, this too. What would it be stranger, or, or just if Geppetto had made it a daughter, it made it a little girl rather than a little boy? Um, I mean, no, I guess I didn't think of gender in this really. I guess I mean, like, I'm sorry if I, oh, don't, I don't have think... a great answer. I just... no, 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 I was just playing from the story, not like trying to Disney fy right. it if that's what we're right. call it now. So, um we're going to jumble things around, but pretty much Jiminy Cricket is his down and out cricket. Uh, he stowaways in Geppetto's house. He has all these clocks everywhere. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down of the every single cuckoo clock has to be a Disney character movie. I think Disney's recognizing the power of nostalgia. Um, obviously, they're making a remake of a cartoon movie um, that was... Uh, when does the original movie come out? 1940. Yeah, but it's obviously been re-released in classics, and it's been everyone knows Pinocchio, right? Right, right. Um, so I think they realized that. Then I think Chip didn't Chip and Dale win an Emmy. The Chip and Dale that we reviewed was it nominated or did it win? I don't. I think it was nominated, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, the Chip and Dale movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, anyway, and so that was obviously all a nostalgia bomb movie, mm. and it it it's playing the audience pretty well. Right. Well, right now the '90s are back with everything because we're the of age. Um, so mm -hmm. Geppetto has Figaro. My daughter loved Figaro. Um, God, what's the fish? Cleo. Yeah, Cleo. She loved the fish. They're, I mean, all this stuff. And you know, Geppetto, Pinocchio, Cleo, Figaro. Oh. Oh, okay. You know what's such a talk about that? When he gets done creating Pinocchio, he's like, you're made out of pine. Pinocchio. I'm like, okay. I mean, all right. Um, they, they did a lot of explaining, though. Like, again, even when Pinocchio becomes, uh, turns alive, um, it's implied that they, like, hang out for a while, and then that's when he goes to All to summer. School. Yeah, well, so <laughs> all summer long? Yeah, all summer long. There you go. No, uh, okay, so Geppetto wishes uh, upon a star, right? And um, we get the Blue Fairy. Uh, I thought this was Fantasia or one of the um, uh, American Idol. Not not Fantasia. Uh, the one that <laughs> won all. Jennifer Hudson. There you go, Jennifer Hudson. I thought, oh, Jennifer Hudson, That's in, she's in this. And no, she's not. Um my wife told me when I told her about what I saw tonight, she goes, oh, the Blue Fairy comes back. She doesn't come back until uh, this is it. I was like, yeah. Is she needed then? Because I don't think she's needed in this movie. And Blue Fairy comes in, you know, does I, her thing. I, I think that this part was, was fine. It was, it was needed just because she gets to sing, you know, 
the big title song there, right? She says, uh, sings when you, when you wish upon a star. So, yeah, you're going to have to have that in there. Uh, right. This is uh, Cynthia uh, Iviro. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but, um, boy, she is a, uh, a powerhouse of an actress. She is one short of an EGOT, Jordan. What? Really? She, she's missing She's missing her Oscar before she gets that. Uh, I recognized her from, as I'm looking at now, uh, the TV show The Outsider on HBO. Don't know that. If she's in Fast and Furious, I'll be pissed. It's based on a Stephen King, actually, uh, novel. It's, um, uh, is it Jason Bateman in this one? Yeah. It's, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but she's really good, um, as, uh, I guess, Stephen King's new kind of uh, quirky detective character. Um, uh, I, I thought she was fine in this, although she was, there was, that was some heavy CGI. Like, this movie was, is already pretty heavy green screen. This yeah. was, was a slap in my face. This was a sugar overload. Yeah, this was the only thing that was bad, though, I think, when it comes to the effects. I mean, I will say this movie does look good. I mean, like, it, it does look good. Uh, Blue Fairy, not so much. Uh, yeah, Overload. I, I would agree. Too many sugar cookies. Um, <laughs> also, I of course, this is the way that I take it. Not saying this is what the movie says. This is how I take it. But Pinocchio is alive, and he's repeating everything that he hears. So she does her little magic wand on his forehead, and then boom. To make him smart, he was dumb. That's the way I interpreted that. You know, she goes, oh, we're going to fix that, make you smart. There we go. Yeah, I you kind, know, of, kind of woke him up a little bit there. Right, right. Um, so we get the summer, right, of Geppetto. And, and uh, well, I mean, like, okay, fine, I'm sorry. Uh, Geppetto wakes up. He handles it pretty well that there's a walking, talking marionette puppet, right? I mean, like, he's 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 completely okay with it after a couple screams that I we. I mean, you get the. Yeah. The Tom Hanks part of it, too. I, right. I, it was at this point in the movie, Jordan, and I promise you, it was at this exact point where I imagined myself as a person on set and be like, you know, Eric, what did you do today? It's like, I watched Tom Hanks just dance around to a to an imaginary little wooden boy, you know, because <laughs> it's just, he has to do a little, a yeah. little jingle, right? A little, a little dance yeah. and ditty there and... I, I I enjoyed it. He he's such a good a good fun actor, man. <laughs> he's fun in this. I mean, like Geppetto, Tom Hanks, Geppetto. It's just great. It's 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 fun. It it makes it really cartoony. Where I feel like a lot of the other live actions still tried to keep real a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to say like um, uh, well, like Mulan, for instance. The live action of that was was very much kind of uh, uh, respectful to the tale of it and it didn't go too far to fantasy. Right. There were moments of it, sure. But, um, you know, something like Dumbo, for instance, kind of tried to do a little bit of both and didn't really know what it wanted to do. Uh, but I, I think this yeah. one kind of found that it's just like, okay, we're going to have to play silly here. We're living in a world with wooden boys, blue fairies, uh, talking foxes. Yeah, um, we're gonna talk about that next. I want to know about that. And you're right. Oh, and let's bring back memories. One of our first new characters here, Sophia the Seagull. Yeah, Sophia the Seagull. I don't know who voices her. So let's talk about the fox and the cat. Cat. Uh, uh, Honest uh, John and uh, well, the I forgot what the the, the cat's name is. But it's a cat, okay? But uh, but Honest John is play is voiced by Keegan Michael Peel, right? Uh, Keegan, yep. Right. Um, so question about this world. Oh, right. Sophia, sorry to cut you, is played by Lorraine Bracco. She's uh, the therapist in Sopranos. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so my question <laughs> is, okay, so okay, so now we get to this. Okay. Do, you, do you see it now? Is it? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I do. I, tell me what's going on. Um, all right, so we get into this cute, small, secluded little film about Pinocchio and then we expand into the world. So this is where it starts to get a little nuts because is the fox and the cat, do people see the fox and the cat? Is this all Geppetto's head? Uh, is, is Pinocchio a real boy? I mean, there's a lot of questions here. Do people, do human beings actually acknowledge the fox? I mean, we could go deep into this. We could Ryanize this if you wanted to. And not really observe it and be like it's not um, 
the fox as a physical person, but in spirit. You know, he is a sleazy person, whereas that cat is just, you know, you could make that analogy if you if you wanted to. Or you could just say that it's a ridiculous story and buckle up. I'm going to go with that latter. I'm going to go with that one. Yeah, so it, it doesn't... Uh, however you put it, like, the character is sleazy all the way. So, um, sure, does it help that it depicted as, like, a sly fox? Uh, sure. Um, I liked that... I, I thought I'd notice and agree with me, please, or not, that his cape was a was a curtain. It looked like a curtain. He also had chains around his neck, too. Well, I, I think because I saw on one side of the of his cape, there were, like, gold rings, you know, as if to, to be um, the hangers from the rod. And that Ooh. I don't know if, if that Ooh. chain was, was the, the, the pullback or maybe just something that he had added on there. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So then Pinocchio. Baller-ass cape. Who knows? Goes to school, gets kicked out because he's not a real boy. And then... Honest John, the fox, and the cat are like, hey, we know this guy. Remember Stromboli? Am I wrong? You got to, I mean, sell it, man. You got to give me the role if you can do it. No, I can't. I'm, 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 <clears throat> Should I try? I'm coming off the I'm cold German. here. I can do it. Stromboli? Stromboli? <laughs> oh, that was true. <laughs> and, the, and the stream right there. Damn. Why did you do that? Stromboli. Oh, because... Stromboli. I, I would be not doing my, my father justice if I didn't at least try. It was one of the, you know, Disney impersonations that um, I got from my dad growing up, so I had to give it a try. Uh, do you... That, I, and he's I, also one of my favorite characters in this movie. The guy makes me laugh Stromboli? every time. Stromboli? Stromboli? Yeah. He oh, is the only Italian actor in the movie. Italians are the last people you can be openly racist against, so... I thought it was my people, the Irish. No, I, well, you guys shoot back, right? Just give us a potato and Guinness will be all right. <laughs> I, I so, liked it because of how absurd and exaggerated the character is. Yeah, right. no, it. I, I get Yeah. Okay, so my uh, memory, again, I don't remember everything, but uh, they say, hey, don't you want to be a famous? Don't you want to be a star, you know? And, and Jiminy Cricket's trying to get to uh, Pinocchio because he's his conscience, blah, blah, blah. Um, he meets... A girl with a busted foot, ankle, leg, whatever, and she has a marionette puppet. Was that in the original, or was that added for this, too? Uh, I, oh, in the original cartoon? No. Yeah. No, no, this is added. This is, uh, yeah, this is definitely added. I okay, cut it. I don't know much about the original story. I can't, I can't imagine that Disney would stray too far um, from source material that it steals, but uh, I don't think she was, I think she's another new character. All right, just cut her. There was no reason for her to be in this, to be honest with you. Um, the only reason, I, I agree with you for the most part, because I think a lot of scenes were extra, but, and then I, I really I thought about this more, um, because the one thing that they did throughout this movie that they did in the cartoon it was, uh, in the cartoon, the Blue Fairy would, had come back at this point when he was locked in Stromboli's uh, trailer. Oh, okay. To... to let her, him out in, you know, to fix the nose, right? Also to kind of reprimand Jimmy the Cricket a little bit more. Um, that's a nice correction because it's just like Blue Fairy made a mistake. Like, like damn, Blue Fairy, like, you gotta... And she, she's coming back down to be like, oh, let me just put the car back on the track here. You know, it's it's kind of a, a silly part in the original movie or if it's a part of the story. Uh, I liked this rather... Um, that he's doing it through the assistance of maybe something else, you know, a uh, sympathy from another or a friend that he's made along the way rather than it being a correction. Right. Okay, but then but then I want to know, um, because maybe this was the part where I stepped out to go to the restroom at, um, but uh, where, did, where did his nose grow? Was that here? Uh, yeah, when Jiminy Cricket got okay. into the trailer. Um, he Pinocchio started to lie about it, and that's when his nose would grow. Jimmy Cricket made the comment, just like, "Oh, well, when you lie, it it changes you." Or, gotcha on that line, and yeah, then they got the key through the nose growing. He started to be apologizing and be aware of of what happened, and the nose shrank. Um, and there you Standard. go, classic. All right, 
So then he does the no strings on me. Um, is it is it shame on me for every time that Pinocchio was singing that song? I was thinking of um, Age of Ultron, or no? <laughs> I mean, that's that's obviously where James Bader. That's where it's coming from, right? But if right. This, I'm just saying. I, I, just, I, I think of Age of Ultron now, which is the only reason why I should think of that movie other than that. Um, <laughs> but then, I, okay. It's a good part, right? <laughs> right, right. It was fun. It was it was fun. It was funny. It was entertaining. Um, we get the Russian marionettes. We get, uh, what, uh, Strom, Stromboli and breaking go. the thing, you know, and then you he get gets the... can the... dance girls um, there, too. It, it was, a, again, a nice um, callback to the original. And then he figures out, I don't know if this is in the original or not, I don't think so, but he figures out if he moves his feet really fast, wood on wood, creates a fire, he'll use that for later in the film, bring that back, foreshadowing. And then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but Luke Evans, uh, who decides to drop Dracula and now is on Disney. He was Gaston. Now he's this. He is now uh, coach, coach, coachman, coachman, coachman. Coachman. He he is now also getting paid. Man, Disney must just have him on bankroll. Oh, he got paid for this. He got paid good. I mean, you when Disney, you would think, gives you a call and to one of their a remix of original IP is so just like, yeah, that's probably going to be good money. Right, right, because he was he was great as as, as Gaston. He was great here. Um, if if this is going to be his career, uh, fine. I, I mean, like you know, good for you, right? I, I I'm excited to see what else he does for Disney. He was fine. I like um, Luke Evans. Yeah, he's he's good. But then we get instead of this buck tooth boy like in the cartoon. We get uh, this other friend. I don't remember the friend's name that Lamp he meets Wick. on the Lamp Wick on yeah. the on the carriage. Also, they added something new, which I watched a Watch Mojo uh, video after this about comparison uh, uh, differences of the 1940s cartoon and this one. And they said that it was only boys going to Paradise Island, but yep. this time it was boys and girls. I didn't notice. I didn't care. Who cares? Right? They're kids. Kids are kids. Right, so yeah, I think it was uh, obviously more of a time thing that boys were a little bit more rambunctious in the streets, uh, or maybe it was just kind of an orphan thing. But who the hell cares? I I, I agree with you. Um, I they cut out the the it's root beer drinking instead of beer drinking, and they smoked cigars in the cartoon. They did, and which I call BS on because. I know what root beer and beer looks like, and I don't. I've never ever once in my life seen yellow root beer. It was, uh, yeah. I, obviously, the symbolism was there. Is that these kids were up to no good? Right. So I want to talk about Coach, uh, the the coachman, real quick. So so his plot is he's a magician. Is he not a magician? He takes children that are. Stowaways, uh, foster kids, if you will, kids that have no parents, if you will. He takes them to Paradise Island. Is that Paradise Island? Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. Do what you want. Destroy what you want. Drink the root beer. You know, I'm not going to say it. Drink the beer. Do what you want. But inside the beer is a magical potion that will turn you into a donkey so he can sell them to salt mines. Yeah, I don't know. Did That's they the plot say, of him. Did they say that it was in the in the beer? I, I thought it was just basically an island that's just like... I thought it was in the beer. Uh, that's fine. I, I'm cool with that, too. But, Wasn't uh, that in the original? In the original, I'm pretty sure it's just being in the island and acting like a jackass turns you into a jackass. I think that's uh, just so kind of what that symbolism is. Uh, I took it as the beer, man. That's that's fine too, but I mean it's included with the jackassery, if that's right. a word I can use in here. If, if, if with the behavior, you're, mm. you know, is to drink like that, uh, to binge and uh, un- underage too, I guess, right? Be reckless with right. it. Um, albeit all that stuff looked fun. Like that's a one hell of an amusement park. That is a real big uh, rage room that the that the, he had set up there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hundred percent um give um acknowledgement to Zumekis here with his directing. When Pinocchio gets to what well, you said Pleasure Island, right? When he gets to yep. Pleasure Island, uh they go on this little roller coaster with with uh, with his friend, if you will, his friend, 
and we get to see every little thing through this water roller coaster. I thought that was a great choice to do that. We get to see everything, what everybody is doing, what are the good things, what are the bad things, you know, all the, we get to see the island. And uh, really, really dug it. I, I love the roller coaster that flies off and there's no track and gets back on. Loved it. And then they're like, hey, break everything, steal everything, you know. But later on, I, I kind of want to jump. Later on, the kids are starting to turn to donkeys. And here's my question about the magician thing. Uh, we get these shadow monsters. Now, these shadow monsters were in the original, but uh, what's with the shadow monsters? Is he a magician? I just I, I don't understand what 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 Coachman's plot is. Yeah, I just he, don't get it. Everyone's just trying to make a buck. Honest John's trying to make a buck, and uh, Stromboli's trying to make a buck, and uh, the Coachman's trying to make a buck. Everyone, everyone is like Geppetto, who seems to be cool with uh, not, you know, which is oh hey, kind of just figured that out right now. Uh, there but, you go. You know, there you go. He, he's there. not trying to turn a profit. In fact, he sells all of his stuff instead of to sell to buy a boat so he can go to Pleasure Island and look for Pinocchio. Yeah, that's the thing, too. That's kind of like BS for me, too. He's like, what? He's at Pleasure Island? We got it. So everybody knows that Pleasure Island is around, which means the parents would tell the kids, hey, Pleasure Island ain't a place to go, but the kids still go and act like they don't know what Pleasure Island is. Again, these kids might be orphans. Uh, Something you're on the street after a certain time, you're gonna get picked up. I'm trying to tear this movie apart. I get. <laughs> I, don't, I get you, man, because it's ridiculous, and we didn't even get to the to the messed up part yet with Monstro. But we're at a part where, um, yeah, like this island is huge, right? Which, by the way, I get to see Zemeckis being like, "All right, you guys saw Polar Express, right? I want to do that, but with candy." Everyone's just like, Robert, you got to stop doing this, man. We don't need to do it again. It didn't work the first time. He's like, no, no, we're going to do it. I promise you it's going to work this time. Santa's Village, bring it in, put all rainbows on it, and then fireworks in the background, and that's exactly what happened, I think. Yeah, that's, it was awesome, though. It was a cool place. I'm not going to lie. It was cool. And then uh, Pinocchio, I'm sorry, Let, Letwig? Letwig? Let Lampwick. Lamp wick. Like a, like a uh, yeah, lamp wick. Right. They're uh, playing pool, and this is where lamp wick turns. Oh, I actually want to add one more daughter thing. Uh, when we're going through the tour, Fantasy I uh, Paradise Valley. Pleasure Island. Island. Whatever. <laughs> she looks at me and she says, of course, this is a, this is, she's not telling me the truth. She goes, Dad, yes, honey, I want to go to that because they're strangers and I don't know them. Pleasure Island. I was like, okay, but the law. okay, okay, sweetie, whatever you say. You went with the strange man with candy. Don't lie to me. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I was nervous. I was nervous for a little bit because because when uh, because when the dude turned into a donkey, I was like, oh, that's that's kind of horrific. That kind of brought me back to the original movie, you know. But then I was like, yeah. But then I showed her Thor: God and Thunder this year, and I mean, she can do anything at this point. Um, that's a good point to bring up when people were complaining about that movie. It's just like, well, do you remember the movies that we were watching? Yeah, Pinocchio is a great example of, of nightmare fuel. Uh, yeah. Not to mention Dumbo and the Pink Elephants or the Elephants on Parade. Uh, right. You know, like, we could keep on going. Disney was doing a good job uh, in whatever before its golden era there to really uh, haunt some kids' minds. <laughs> Can I just add uh, some spices real quick? Um Last night before this recording, everybody, uh, my wife and I had nothing to watch. I was going to watch Pinocchio with my daughter the next day today. So uh, I saw that Thor uh, Love and Thunder was on um, Disney+. Plus. So I showed my wife that because she didn't see that with me in theaters. My daughter did. And not even halfway through the movie, my wife turned to me, kind of like kind of like horror movie turned, like, you know, like turned her head slowly. <laughs> and it was like, you went and saw this in the theaters with your daughter. And I went, I know, I'm sorry. She goes, to Russell Crowe has said orgy like six times. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that just kind of like takes me back to, you know, watching this and him turn into a donkey. I'm like, oh, maybe this isn't good. She's seen Thor. She's good. Um, <laughs> Pinocchio gets the little, little ears. One thing I want to add to, he gets the tail too. If you paid attention to the ears and to the tail, something the cartoon didn't do, uh, he's made out of pine. He's made out of wood, right? 
So if you really pay attention, you can see like kind of like the uh, um, kind of like the joints, if you will. Yeah. Like it was wood. It was wood ears and wood tails. I thought that was kind of cool. That was a good detail. I I enjoyed right. that too. And um, again, uh, those added features uh, you brought it up in during Stromboli too is that uh, the Soul One Boy seems to have just motor legs, and is able to. Um, I guess they just did in the, the put that in the front of the movie too when he was dancing with Geppetto, and uh, really broke it down. But um, that's kind of a unique skill. It's just like, geez, if, if you become a real boy, are you going to lose that skill? Like, it seems you want to keep that. It seems like a great utility. Geppetto says that, too. He goes, if you were a real boy, you would have done this. Um, so Pinocchio leaves Pleasure Island, comes back, and sold all the cuckoo clocks. And they find out from the seagull that, uh, that Geppetto is on a boat and he's going to Pleasure Island to get uh, Pinocchio. And Pinocchio ride? Pinocchio. rides? No, he's not rides. He has he has a rope in the seagull's mouth, and he's whatever kind of sport that is, right? With his feet. Jet ski? It's not jet ski. Water ski? Water skiing without, you know, the skis. And uh, find Geppetto. They're happy, and all of a sudden, here comes. Monstro, right? The oh, sea beast. Now, hold on. I cut you right there because my favorite one, the part that I laughed at this movie was when Pinocchio was getting jetted out there by the by the seagull, and they were having their dialogue, and he was doing the catch up of like, oh, I went to school, but then they kicked me out, and then I wanted to be famous, and then I, just, you know, catching him all up, and it cuts to Tom Hanks, and he goes, you did that all that in one day? One day? <laughs> Yeah, that is. I actually feel like that. I actually feel like that wasn't scripted. I feel that was Tom Hanks is going, what? Yeah. You've done this all because you're right. I mean, like he went to school that morning and but at and then at night he was at Pleasure Island. Like, yeah. yeah. And um, we get Monstro. So I guess this was a book before. So in the 1940s Disney cartoon, it was a whale. In the book, I guess it was kind of Krakenish. So it looks like they kind of merged the two together. Um, part of the language here, you were talking shit for a second about Monstro. You have a problem with Monstro here? Oh, no, I think this is, um, if not the Pleasure Island scene, then the Monstro scene would, would be scary for, for most. Uh, it's a, it's a big, it's a big whale. And as I remember in the cartoon, like the, the chase and the attack scenes were, well, they were scary, man. He's a, he's a big, he's a big fish. And uh, having that thing kind of steam full ahead at you is intimidating, right? Uh, it was intimidating, yeah, because it's also like a kraken, too, because it had tentacles. Um, is it just me or not when they're in Monstro's – well, they're not in his belly. They're in his mouth, right? I'm not, uh, we're not going to pretend to know the anatomy of right. such a um, creature. This is straight from the set of Goonies, right, with the messed up pirate ships and – Oh, man, you think that's one I Willie's ship? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is like Goonies. Um, and then, of course, we get the smoke, you know, to make it sneeze. Boom, make it sneeze. When we get the uh, motorboat, Pinocchio. I, and then when they get s sneezed out, right, Geppetto's dead or passed out. Pinocchio cries. Don't know, don't care. We're not going to go down that road. And wakes Geppetto up with the blue fairy dust. Right? Mm -hmm. And then they have their moment, right? So then I paid attention. I paused it. I don't know if you paid attention. But at the end of the original movie, he turns into a real boy, mm -hmm. right? At this movie, they're walking through the cave. And if you notice from his kneecaps down to his feet, they turned from wood to real boy. Did you notice that? I did not. I okay. think I was kind of ready for the movie done. to be over at the time. <laughs> you were done. You were done. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened, though. Because I paused, I was like, oh, because it goes, you know how he has the pins in his knees, right, on the sides? <laughs> yeah. That goes away to, like, like little, like, Deadpool baby legs, Oh, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, that, that's what's happening I'd right I'd be curious to, get, to check that out, actually. Yeah, it was it was subtle, but it was it was right there. Um, I'm not mad that we hate it. I, I'm not mad that we reviewed this movie. <laughs> um, because this kind of reminds me of the day that you, I think, I think a piece of you died on Movie Guys podcast when we did Dumbo. Both of us. Man, and, that movie just yeah. 
and I feel this is better than Dumbo. I think we gave a no bag to Dumbo, and and I definitely I'm feel stand so. by that one. Yes, you are, and I will too, because Tim Burton sucks. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was it was what it was. My daughter had a good time watching it. It's not a large bag. We're gonna get into it soon. It's it's. It's what it was. So, Eric, we'll go with you, buddy. What is your popcorn rating of the brand new 2022 Disney live action Pinocchio? Uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna, you know, be surprised here. I mean, it's it's no more than a medium, but I'm gonna see if I can try to keep that um, as I go through it because I might talk myself down. I mean, it's it's a silly, absurd movie, but again, it's. It knows that it is, and I've always appreciated that in movies. Tom Hanks does a great job. I think they this movie does very well in piecing those little questions that we had lingering. Yeah, uh, for for so many, like, you know, like, why would an old man make a wooden boy? Uh, to cover that is, is pretty good, and add to the story was was good. I, I enjoyed that for, for that. Um, there was a bit of comedy in every part. I think that was great. I forgot that JGL was Jiminy Cricket. Uh, it didn't sound like him. Yeah, which is what a weird character too, uh, to kind of have him just, whoa, whoa, you, you just. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually really good. That's excuse me. That was really oh, good. I'm cracking myself up. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> but th- that was, you know, roughly ten minutes of screen time was just this green thing just slipping and sliding everywhere. Um, <laughs> hold on, Pinocchio. You know, just you sound great, man. That was uh, good. It's I do I practice voices a lot. That was good. A lot. Yeah, thank that was you. Good. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> especially Disney voices, I think I got it down. But uh, he was a bit. Um, I don't want to say obnoxious at times, but I guess I'll use it because I can't find a better word. Just it didn't seem like it needed to be there. Other than he's just jumping from one scene to the other. Sure. Um, oh, I, I enjoyed his chirps whenever he was uh, jumping. I thought that was a fun little detail. He's a mm-hmm. Um, I don't, Tom Hanks really was the star of this, and I really liked him more of it. Uh, I like Pinocchio just being like this kind of I don't know happy idiot. <laughs> just kind of just kind of Watson, or you know, like a, the boy in the bubble, just just right. kind of you know. The happy go lucky. Uh, so I enjoyed it. It 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 is of all the live action ones. This is probably one that I would rewatch. Okay. You know, okay. not not by choice, but like if it was on, I'd be like, yeah, sure. I'm, you know, and I'd have fun talking about it. Um, that Pleasure Island scene, the Polar Express scene, it it does seem a bit extra in a movie that's already gone well and above and beyond extra. So I didn't think I I liked that part so much, but the you have you gotta have them turn to donkeys. There's no right. other ways to to not do that. Um, Monster was fine. Uh, I don't know, medium I guess. It might like a, a small with large or a small with a lot of butter on top. You know, it's just kind of I, I guess medium. Just yeah. Because it, it it was enjoyable for the most part, but what was the runtime on this movie? It was almost two hours. It was like an hour and 54 minutes. Uh, yeah, it says hour 45 on IMDb. Hour 50 probably sounds good with uh, with some creds. Uh, yeah, you know, it's that's really the most I can give it. Sure. No, yeah, I would actually totally agree with you. We're a two for two on this one. This is the medium bag. Um, I didn't think I was going to have fun with this. Maybe it's because I watched this at 7.50 in the morning with a six-year-old, uh, still drinking my coffee, you know, like, uh, oh, what are we watching? Um, uh, but it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Like, it's – how about this? For everybody who was listening to our review, if you have young children under the age of 10, this is great. This is a great family. What are we going to watch Disney Plus night? It, it, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it is exactly what you expect it to be. Uh, It's as crazy as you expect it to be, and it's as fun as you want it to be, especially if you have children. It does try to pull the harsh strings a little bit sometimes here and there, and and that's always good for parents, you know, to be like, oh. But, you know, other than that, it's crap. It's it's nothing that I love personally. We all know what I love, but it's, it's exactly what it is. So, yeah, better than Dumbo. 
probably in the same ballpark as Beauty and the Beast, I, right? I, like it's I, a medium. Um, I agree with you saying that if if given the choice, I think I would pick this one over the original cartoon. I, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it it tells the same story. Like it it, it takes out. Uh, I don't know. It just it's fun. It, it's just better. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I say it's fun, we close out the show. When I say it's fun, this doesn't mean that I like personally think this is great. I think we all know from years of movie guys podcast, Eric, what kind of movies I like. <laughs> but rom coms. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why Seven is one of my favorites. But it is, it is, it, it does exactly what it what it needs to do. Uh, I tell you what else what needs to do is I want to know what is she having because I'll have what she's having. Hey, I could say Seven is a rom com because it's it's about a woman who loses her head and her lover who tries to help her find it. I hate you. Good night, everybody. Ha, 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 ha.